Good morning, everyone. I, Nazneen Daryavardi, warmly welcome in second day of, of first session of STTP on Environmental Engineering for Global Sustainability, organized by Saraswati Institute of Technology, Khargar. Our today's first session is on environmental challenges in coastal road by Mrs. Archana Ramgiri, ma'am. It's my great pleasure to introduce to our today's speaker, Mrs. Uh, Archana Ramgiri, ma'am. Mrs. Archana, ma'am, have completed her B from Mumbai University in civil engineering. Also, she was awarded with the master degree in environmental engineering from VJTI College. She is having vast experience of 21 years as an assistant engineer in BMC. Also, she is member of in-house environment management cell for Mumbai Coastal Road Project. I would request to ma'am to share her 21 years of knowledge and expertise with us. Hello. Hello. Hello, ma'am, start. To. Yeah, I can start. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm very thankful to Saraswati Institute of Technology for giving me this opportunity. I will uh, I also thank for the, uh, Ujit Gur. She has introduced me very well. I welcome all students and faculty in my short presentation and brief, uh, brief information uh, regarding uh, the in MCRP. MCRP is the Mumbai Coastal Road Project undertaken by BMC is for the ease of a traffic in a city as well as for a western suburb. Initially, the project was uh, formulated for 29 kilometers from Nariman Point to the uh, Kandivli, uh, Mumbai West Coast. But as per the decision of state government, it is only, uh, the BMC has only considered the south part that is from Princess Flyover to the Varaya Bangar Sailing end of the worried uh, junction okay so my presentation is environment challenges in mumbai coastal road project stuff the content of my presentation is brief introduction which you have already given then introduction for uh, of mcrps environmental challenges in mcrps and mitigation measures uh, i archana ramgiri already completed my mtech environment from Visitia in 2012 and now I'm appearing for a PG in environmental laws and policy. I have worked in a various institute, uh, first as a lead consultant and CS then in MADA and from 2007 onwards I have worked with the BMC, started as a sub-engineer and then promoted as an assistant engineer. I was I got the opportunity to work with a very prestigious project of BMC, that is Mumbai Sewage Disposal Project, as well as a coastal road project. At both the thing, uh, at um, both the things, I'm working with for uh, environmental issues, environmental clearance, forest clearance for the particular project. So my achievement means we have obtained environmental clearance for coastal road as well as uh, for uh, Malar Sewage Treatment Plant. So now we will go with for the our case study that is Mumbai Coastal Road Project. Um, I'm glad to inform you that it was one of the very prestigious project of uh, BMC. It is uh, located at the uh, it is located at, this is the location and connectivity of the project. It is located at the uh, south side of the Mumbai city and connected to the Varari Bandra sailing project. This is the scope started from uh, Marine Lines, that is Princess Street flyover, and uh, then coming up to the Varari Bandra sailing. Why we need a coastal road? Basically, Mumbai is a very densest uh, mega city. Mumbai's shape is a narrow and linear. And also all utilities are under the road. That's why 
there is a, a need of alternate route to develop the uh, ct and the ct being a softer shape flooding challenges are chronic alternatives need to be made available even uh, traffic needs to be eased improving time and fuel efficiency to road accident to need to reduce by reducing cross roads and thereby improving mobility speed improving fuel efficiency would reduce air pollution and, and reducing traffic would reduce the noise pollution improve intercity connectivity across all modes to play in advance for any disaster situation so this is the basic need why we are going for a coastal road and when we are uh, planning for a coastal road we got many of benefits benefits of it the first thing we are going to reduce 70% reduction in community time so basically it will uh, reduce the time to 8 minutes from 30 to 45 minutes between marine drive and worli in the day time for a no normal traffic condition average speed on a coastal road will be the 80 km per hour as against 21 km on the existing road relieve traffic on the existing road network to great extent plan dedicated bus lane in coastal road will further reduce the traffic congestion on existing road this is going to improve air quality substantially reduce noise and air pollution due to the reduced traffic conduction basically 30 per uh, 34% of fuel saving will be there and reduce the carbon footprint by about 1826 ton 1826 tons of co2 per annum just because of we are going to reduce that traffic congestion it will improve connectivity between the southern and northern parts of mumbai and provide a better accessibility to the historical and heritage structures of south mumbai road users benefit will be from saving in vehicle operating cost travel time accident cost and maintenance cost so now we will go with the alignment of this coastal road it started from the princess street flyover that is a marine line the marine drive um and it aimed to the worli end of the bandra worli seaway the project is divided into the three packages the first one is package 4 which is started from princess street flyover to the priyadarshini park which is marked in a blue line it contains tunnel uh, cut and cover ramp the tunnel below the malbar hill second is a package 2 which is shown in the uh, sky blue line that is from priyadarshini park to baroda palace it's majorly concerned on road on reclamation there is a bridges and there is a two interchanges then the third one is a package 2 shown in a pink line it is also on a road on a reclamation and bridges is there and uh, it goes from the baroda palace to the varali end of the bandra varali ceiling uh these are the uh, db contractor uh, the this uh, coastal road is uh, constructed on the basis of design basis contractor so in this we are uh, the contractor will design the things we have given rfp we have given some specification our and then accordingly the uh, contractor will going to design it and they will going to construct to supervise them there is a project management consultant for each packages and on behalf of them there is a general consultant overall all the packages so package 4 uh, lnt is going to work for that and the pmc is ms ocean engineering company plus tech jotro for package 1 also lnt is there and the pmc is louis berger consultant private limited and for package 2 uh, scc and hdc is working on a joint venture and the uh, pmc is ages india consulting in engineering private limited plus cluent gromit and uh, uk limited and overall on this general consultant is mrs a com asia cooperative limited silent feature of the project is very fine the 0.5 km total reclamation is 111 hectare area for green recreational open space is a 70 hectare interchanges in total coastal road is a 
and length of interchanges is around 15.66 km the number of lengths we are going to provide is eight lengths four uh, four plus four and in tunnel we are going to provide three plus three width of a carriage way is 17 meters and 9.6 meter in tunnel median is 11 meter and we are going to provide a 20 meter promenade for the people tunnel uh, length of twin tunnel is 2.07 km each and the dia of tbm is 12.1 meter 12.19 uh, meter and internal dia is 11 meter underground car parking there are four numbers of underground car parking and total numbers of parking lots are 1800 cars there is 8.5 kilometer long promenade we are going to provide for citizen of mumbai and seawall is a 4.47 kilometer so now the cost of this very prestigious project this is a total over and cost of rupees 12000 721 crores and the contract schedule of this project is contract period is a 48 months that is a 1461 days so commencement date of the project was the 13th 10th 2018 that is 13th October and schedule completion is uh, 26 November 2023 so uh, within the next year, you are going to see that coastal road will be completely there, and then the defect liability period will be the four, 24 months. Current status of the project is the work are in progress on a various fronts. Currently, the work of reclamation, construction of a seawall, ram, cut and cover, pile, piers, deck slabs, mono pile construction, pedestrian underpass, SWD outfalls, tunnel boring, etc., are in a progress. Tunnel boring of one tunnel is achieved and for another tunnel is one kilometer we have already achieved. Physical progress of a total work is approximate 53 point or uh, it's uh, 54 percentage. There are very uniqueness in this project as the tunnel are being bored by India's largest diameter that is 12.19 meter tunnel boring machine. First time in India, we are using Sakkarado ventilation system will be installed in a road transport environment. First time in India, the bridge will be constructed on a monopile foundation to reduce the impact on uh, environment. In this sing uh, single project, there is a road on reclamation, bridges, interchanges, tunnel, undersea, as well as hills and the creation of green open space, etc. So I will request you to see whatever I told you at present, ki how the coastal road will be there. You can be uh, visualized with this small video. And uh, mm.
Maybe he can hear.
i think now everyone is a clear idea and it's my about what how the mumbai coastal road will be there going to present it so welcome back after seeing this video you are getting idea of a coastal road so basically uh, bnc has a proposed this coastal road to reduce the traffic and uh, good connectivity but there are many others benefits are generated or created in this uh, project mainly environmental benefits and social benefits we are going to see now that the city is devoid of open spaces as we know mumbai is a very small city there is always devoid of open space open space requirement as per the planning norm is 0.2 hectare per 1000 person where are in a present situation open space availability of the city is 0.03 hectare per 1000 person the city is able to create only 320 hectares of open space in a last two decades creation of huge green open space to the magnitude of 70 hectare in four years at one place will enhance the environmental condition so this is a basic or you can see a main uh, advantage or benefit that comes out from the coastal road due to the reclamation that they are going to generate a huge 70 hectare land for uh, uh, recreation purpose about 70 hectare land area to have a kids play area butterfly garden jogging track and cycle track and more as you've seen in a video there is a biodiversity conservation plan proposed to be implemented during the execution of the project will help in regenerating and enhancing the biodiversity of the area thereby maintaining ecological equilibrium in the project area Coastal road will reduce the carbon footprint by about 1,826 ton carbon dioxide per annum. Uh, coastal road will divert traffic from existing internal roads to thereby reducing noise pollution. Fuel saving for southward and northward direction traffic. Three times of number of trees that will be cut in a project will be planted thereby protecting and enhancing the green cover. Continuously wider waterfront prominent will also act as a recreational space similar to existing marine drive, strengthening the economy by easy transportation of various materials of a daily use. Again, the coastal uh, erosion protection measures by providing a seawall with an armor rock at the end of a seaside prominent. Natural material of rock boulders, armored rock, used for seawall to help the growth of marine fauna. Seawall protection pitching design for approximately length of 7.5 km is made in such a way that it will make a condu uh, conducive environment to growth of marine organism, organism by providing a natural surface that is 1.1. 1.5 hectare additional area we are going to produce which will be more than the existing growth protection wall that is breakwater wall considering the storm surge impacts a well-designed breakwater wall on seaward side of proposed coastal road is planned with an elevation above the highest high tide level Coastal road project will not have an adverse impact on a tidal behavior. Gentle curves are proposed to the coastal road to avoid a sharp clean in the coastline. This will smoothen the coastline and no change in the characteristics of the boundary between the coastline and the sea is expected. There are some benefits to fish, uh, fishers. Bridge will be provided with navigable Span so that there will uh, there is no obstruction to the fishing boats. Obstruction to the fishing operation due to the construction activities will be suitably compensated. Uh, social benefits of the project is 
improve connectivity between southern and northern part of mumbai provide better accessibility to historical and heritage structure of south mumbai promenade cycle track jogging track and recreational facilities will help in improving the health of the citizens uh, coastal rule is access control signal free will enhance the travel speed being a toll free it will encourage common citizens of mumbai open space proposed in the project will provide recreational facilities there will be a tourism incentive all the cultural properties that are in the immediate vicinity of coastal zone will be accessible additional water front uh, will be used as a marine drive road level is planned in a such a way that it will not impact aesthetic and sea view of a commuter commuter subway are proposed across the carriage way for entry and exit which connect bus stops and other facility open strip of a green landscape area will act as a focal point and generate a new identity of a place the aesthetic design and the look of interchanges navigational bridges road surface wide and beautiful central median of the international standard along with the promenade green space garden etc and view of sea during the travel will provide a feel of recreation and contention among the user thereby ultimately improving the environment now our main topic environmental challenges in mcrps and what we have taken as a mitigation measure um this is a one kind of a project uh, bmc has uh, initiated so before start initiating or starting the thing we have done a lot of studies so first is the inception report feasibility report then we have carried out a detailed project report and detailed project report also there are 11 uh, sub heads they are going to generate that report that is the executive summary main report economic and financial uh, financial analysis report engineering report in this report we have gone for a, top, a topography survey report geotechnical report traffic studies report then there is a design report where we have given alignment and pavement design then bridge and tunnel design reclamation and urban design then brts and construction manual methodology report then there will be our drainage design and material investigation report then social impact assessment report tunnel safety and service report environmental impact assessment report then risk assessment and disaster management plan these all in include as a detailed project report so that we can find out their feasibility and we can go for a further uh, execution on and above there is uh, uh, bnc has carried out one special report that studies on extreme waves extreme water levels storm surge tsunami heights and coastal morphology for coastal road project by national institute of oceanography goa being the project is at a intertidal zone um as this project is very prestigious and unique there are number of uh, authorities and stakeholders are involved in this and we have to take a noc from uh, these authorities uh, for example moif and cc mczme is for the uh, crz purpose then mmb being a coastal pwd msrdc commissioner of fisheries as we are going to uh, being uh, in a intertidal zone there may be a impact on a fisheries so we have taken a call and noc from commissioner of fisheries navy coast guard from security point of view and then mumbai heritage conservation committee this is mainly involved due to the, the our project started from a princess street so there is a marine drive uh, heritage uh, committee um, we need to take a noc from mumbai heritage conservation committee also as well as high power committee as we are going to work in a gurgaon chopati then coastal port engineers then revenue department collector as we are going to generate a land huge land offer uh, by reclamation 
so we need a um, not from collector then coastal police and fire bridge so what are the environmental challenges in mcrc the basic challenges the location falls in crz area where no construction or development activities were permitted so what is the major so we need to amend the crz notification then the marine biodiversity along the alignment of the coastal road is going to be affected so we did we did a study of marine biodiversity conservation and monitoring plan and accordingly we are going to monitor what happened to the marine biodiversity there is a, a impact on a coastal ecology so according to uh, we find out the impact and we found found some corals are there and we did the coral translocation so then to study the impact on water current and wave pattern uh, we uh, appointed nio to investigation on impact of phase 1 coastal road project on waves water levels and sea water quality impact on fishing activity for that purpose we appointed cms cmfr and baseline study on the impact of coastal road on fisheries and fisher livelihood mumbai this is in a brief now we are go in a detail so first at any project if we are going to um, take on as a project we need to take all nocs and being in a intertidal zone it is coming under a crz so our first big challenge Ma'am, kindly unmute your mic. Hello, ma'am. Hello. I'm sorry for the interruption. Hello, ma'am. Me bola direct answer jip nahi karna. Ma'am, kindly unmute your mic. कधी पासन सुरुवात करावी लागेल आता लाईट इट्स ओके जस्ट वेट 5 मिनिट पहिले 
सुरुवातीचा घेऊ का पुन्हा चला स्टार्ट फ्रॉम युअर हॅलो या स्लाइड पासन स्टार्ट करू का हॅलो मॅम स्टार्ट मॅडम हा हा मॅम स्टार्ट करा हॅलो मॅम स्टार्ट करा स्टार्ट करू यस मॅम सो अगेन आय रिपीटेड की वाईल एक्झिक्युटिंग एनी प्रोजेक्ट इन अ सी आर झेड एरिया वी नीड अ सी आर झेड एन ओ सी फॉर दॅट पर्टिक्युलर प्रोजेक्ट बट द इन आवर सी आर झेड नोटिफिकेशन टू थाउजंड इलेव्हन देर इज अ नो प्रोव्हिजन फॉर अ कन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रोड बाय वे ऑफ रिक्लमेशन अकॉर्डिंगली इट मीन्स वी आर नॉट इलिजिबल टू कन्स्ट्रक्ट अ रोड ऑन अ रिक्लमेशन सो वॉट इज आवर मिटिगेशन इज वी नीड टू मॉडिफाय और वी नीड टू डू द अमेंडमेंट इन अ सी आर झो नोटिफिकेशन सो बी एम सी हॅज अप्लाइड फॉर दॅट अमेंडमेंट इन सी आर झेड नोटिफिकेशन थ्रू एम सी झेड एम ए अँड एम ओ ई एफ सी सी अँड इट इज रिसिव्हड ऑन थर्टी एट डिसेंबर टू थाउजंड फिफ्टीन सेईंग दॅट कन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रोड बाय वे ऑफ रिक्लमेशन इन सी आर झेड एरिया शॅल बी ओनली इन एक्सेप्शनल केसेस to be recommended by the consent coastal zone management authority and approved by the ministry of environment forest and climate changes and in case of a construction of such a road is passing through mangroves or likely to damage the mangroves three times the number of mangroves destroyed or cut during the construction process shall be replanted after this amendment we have again applied for a crz clearance and uh, the clearance is received on 11th may 2017 after that we are going to uh, we were floating the tenders and we got a response and the contractors are appointed uh, then while during the final design there are some changes in reclamation area and there are some design changes for that we need a amendment in our crz clearance and we are again applied for the same and we are obtained that amendment in a crz clearance on 18th may 2011 during the crz clearance moa moef and cc has a recommendation some studies so accordingly we have carried out the following studies that is first is uh, regarding the fishers and fisheries livelihood cmfr uh, cm uh, central uh, marine fisheries research institute has carried out the baseline study on the impact of coastal road on fisheries and fishers livelihood mumbai nio has uh, carried out so many studies that is one of the marine biodiversity conservation and monitoring plan for ncrp south investigation on impact of phase 1 uh coastal road project on waves water levels and sea water quality oral translocation report pilot study for installation and monitoring of artificial reefs for a biodiversity enhancement along the sea wall of the coastal road project reclaimed region by csr the first thing is marine biodiversity conservation and monitoring plan to 
सेव द मरीन बायोडाइवर्सिटी और टू नो द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ अ कोस्टल रोन ऑन मरीन बायोडाइवर्सिटी बी एम सी हैज कैरिड आउट द मरीन बायोडाइवर्सिटी कंजर्वेशन एंड मॉनिटरिंग प्लान सो एम सी जी एम आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू सी एस आर नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ओशनोग्राफी मुंबई टू डेवलप अ मरीन बायोडाइवर्सिटी कंजर्वेशन प्लान फॉर साउदर्न पार्ट ऑफ अ कोस्टल रोड प्रोजेक्ट बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव इज Uh, this uh, study is collection of sample analysis and interpretation for the physiochemical and biological characteristics of water and sediment samples the sample shall be collected within a 10 km radius in the coastal water from the proposed project location developed a marine biodiversity conservation plan for proposed project region accordingly the study has started Uh, by uh, CSR NIO, and the study area uh, is as shown in a PPT. There is a intertidal region of a proposed project area, and ten kilometer radius. This is the alignment of coastal road, and ten kilometer area up to this. This is a total study area for a coastal road. the sample and coastal water area was sample for study of marine biology during the march 2019 sample locations are the 10 intertidal sections shown uh, shown in a yellow color and 13 subtidal stations were selected mostly marked in a red point parameter studies are uh, phytoplankton total cell count generation phytophigmentation zoo plankton population biomass and group meons benthos faunal groups population biomass microbenthos faunal groups population biomass sea weeds corals sponges fisheries marine mammals and avi fauna these are the studied by the nio for our uh, marine uh, biodiversity in this 10 km radius of coastal water area these are some species uh, find during this study magnafiona you can see very well this is a very small in uh, this thing only we can see with uh, that high density camera we can take a photograph of this these are some other species crabs and sea gulls in this area there are some names of that species these are sea animals and some shellfish and along with the intertidal uh, areas during the studies varieties of uh, shellfish we can see here and some kind of corals means there are six types of corals observed in the study area do one is oleogenia then it's in worli hagelli this is oleogenia then b is uh, rinza gadia c is a uh, polylithius d is a uh, dendrophilidius e is a uh, gonipodia and f is a uh, cicordidespia tayamia these are the locations where the hampack dolphin were sighted during the subtidal survey so impact on coastal ecology uh, during this study marine biodiversity corals are identified in project area at two locations a uh, total 18 colonies of coral covering area about uh, 0.251 square meter were found in worli region and uh, the area coverage of coral in hagelli were 0.11 uh, square meter as these corals are identified within the project area we as per the section of 12 pb of uh, wildlife protection act 1972 
we need a permission is required to avoid their loss due to the construction of coastal road. So, accordingly, uh, we went for a permission wildlife. Uh, uh, we went for a uh, to the forest department under Wildlife Protection Act to take a permission. The permission was given from Principal Chief uh, Conservator of Forest, Maharashtra State, uh, in permit to hunt for a special purpose, purpose to translocate the coral species from Warli and Haji Ali under permit number SPP 55 uh, 121020 dated 29th October 2020 as there is no legal provision for the coral translocation work. Basically, in this Wildlife uh, Protection Act, they have mentioned some species. We need to conserve that species. But this coral species are not identified in their list. So there is a no legal provision for the coral translocation work. This is the first time in India that in India, we are uh, translocating the corals, which is not as identified as a species. But we have taken a uh, forest clearance from under a Wildlife Protection Act a permission. We have taken a permission under Wildlife Protection Act and we have translocated this corals. The, this permit was for a scientific management project involve capturing and hunting and collection and translocation of coral species order from the area under alignment and outside to the alignment area that is 0.251 square meter in Warli and 0.11 square meter in Haji Ali to suitable nearly sites to avoid their loss due to the construction of Mumbai Coastal Road Project Maharashtra. Coral translocation. Total 18 colonies of coral covering area of 0.251 square meter were found in Burley. They were successfully translocated to the Burley dist distance about 130 meter from the project activity area. The area coverage of corals in Hajali is 0.11 square meter, which was translocated successfully at an intertidal region of Navy Nagar, Kulaba, Mumbai. The translocation of corals have been executed by the experts from the NIO in the presence of representative from the additional principal chief conservator of forest, Mangrose. There were no damages was found caused to the other wildlife during the translocation process. This is a coral translocation process for a Haji Ali. The first thing is collection of corals along with the attached rock substram at the donor site, tagging of the corals, uh, acrylic rectangle sheet used as a tag with embossed number and fix them by using super glue adhesive. We can find out here. We are going to tag it. This is we are carrying a collection of corals. Then this is the tagging of that corals. We are for tagging with that adhesive. Then transporting of corals kept inside and filled with the sea water from the same tide pool with the proper aeration. So as we are going to transport them from Haji Ali, we are going to transport them to the Navy Nagar Kulaba area. So it's uh, around 10 to 12 kilometer area. So to keep that coral as in that condition only, we are using the sea water. In a, from the same tide full with that proper aeration. Again, this is uh, going to be water quality checking before and after the transportation of corals. We are uh, ensuring that kick, uh, water is right for them. Then that placing of corals along with the attached rock and substrum to the receptant site. So basically, the main concern is the donor site and receptant site. We need to check that site conditions whether they are matching or not. So for a Haji Ali purpose, we are getting a, a site, a recepting site at a Navy Nagar Kulaba, which are going to exactly match the all the characteristics of a water as in Haji Ali. After that, the coral translocated and placed inside the receptant type pool. So 
these are the things we are going to place in a uh, Nevinagar Kulaba area for uh, coral translocation. They are translocated uh, very uh, finely. The translocation process for Barli is uh, different from the Haji Ali because here we are going to translocate it within the nearby the project area, but in within a Barli zone only. So the process is first at the donor site, colonies were carefully assessed for detachment with its existing hard substance. We can see in this, this is a very hard substance. This is a hard rock where the corals are there. So we need to identify the things and we have to be very careful to assess the detachment of its uh, coral. The substrum of the coral colonies was cut by using AG7 angle grinder with a diamond cutter blade, chisel and hammer without any disturbing the coral colonies. As we see here, this is a diamond cutter and this thing. We are cutting the site of coral without harming the actual coral. So it's a very tiny things because it's only 0.251 square meter area. So we can think about that. It's a very tiny thing and we have to be very careful while uh, cutting the things. After this detachment of substratum, the intact coral colonies were kept submerged in the crates filled with the seawater and were immediately carried them to the nearby receptant site. All the intact colonies were fixed on the rocky bed by using a rapid setting cement at a similar tide level of a low tidal zone. Proper care has been taken to ensure that no particle of a cement settle or touch the coral polyps. The distance above 130 meter reception site was kept from the project activities area. As we can see this placed coral along with that substrum. We are cutting here with the extra care and we are uh, keeping them in that the same tide pool and we are fixing them with the rapid settling cement at the receptive side. So here we are set using that cement to uh, settle the things but we have taken a proper care that the cement should not be touched to this coral th things, colonies. That no particle of cement touched to the coral polypine. Accordingly, we have successfully translocated the corals from Varli and Haji Ali area to the Varli and Nevinagar Kulaba. Then we have taken a third thing. We want to know the what will the impact of a coastal road project on waves, water levels and seawater quality. So we have appointed again NIO for the investigation on the impact of a phase one coastal road for uh, during the construction and after the construction. So basically the objectives are to undertake a monitoring of waves, currents, water levels and shoreline changes at two points along proposed coal southern side of a coastal road and to investigate the impacts of the project on the physical parameter if any. To undertake monitoring of seawater quality parameter at 13 points of the proposed southern side of a coastal road and to investigate an impacts on the project on the seawater quality parameters if any. Like this, the contract is awarded to NIO for a six years, four years as a construction period and two years as a DLP periods to find out what will be the uh, impact in future also. So to find out the water, find out the uh, waves, current water level and shoreline changes, NIO has uh, bought uh, met ocean boyas. There are two met ocean boyas. They have transplanted here in a sea uh, coastal road region. That this is the instrument they are going to 
from this instrument they are going to uh, report the things for uh, they are going system will uh, reading of this will going to be uh, effective study they will give the readings and they are going to make a report on this basically met ocean boyas is a instrument that can find uh, that can give you reading of a weather sensor that is they can give you a reading for a wind wind spin, speed sun radiation and humidity they have a adcp acoustic doppler current profile which will use doppler effect to measure the ocean current direction and speed also they have a motor sensor wave sensor it will record the moment in 3d will used to measurement of a tides and waves wave height and directions uh, radar reflector for ship navigation to avoid the collision so these are the more important four important point in this instrument which gives us all whatever required uh, for that study or whatever the required things so it is giving us a wind speed sun radiation humidity then it will give us the uh, current directions and speed it will give us the wave height and directions and it will give tides and waves and it will uh, use solar energy it will be working on a solar energy so it is also a environmental friendly and reading of this will be used to study the effect of construction of coastal road on marine environment picture with the cap marine environment mcgm is trying to find out each and everything means bmc is find bmc is trying to find out each and everything regarding coastal road so they have appointed nio to find out what will be the impact of a coastal road uh, in, a, in a impact on waves water levels or sea water quality and this we can get a result after the completion of a 6 years uh, project but uh, meanwhile during the construction they have uh, nio has uh, submitted a uh, three reports and in that reports it is mentioned that there is no significant changes or no changes due to the coastal road projects on uh, water quality on sea water quality now the coastal in the due to the intertidal zone coastal road alignment in the intertidal zone there is a impact on fishing or fishing uh, activity there may be impact of on a fishing on fishing activity for that reason um, as per the action plan submitted in uh, honorable high court and uh, on 29th march in the matter of uh, repetition 560l of 2019 and as per the requirement of a crz noc um as the central marine fisheries research institute was appointed to carry out the work of baseline study on impact of a coastal road on fisheries and fisher livelihood it includes study on fisheries fish diversity abundance in the near shore of the coastal road project area in the sea during the construction period possible impact of a coastal road on the fisheries extent of fisheries area and fishing village loss if any of fishing area and livelihood on dependent population cmfr concluded in its report of 2 october 2020 that reclamation would destroy limited region of shore with a rocky and sandy patches having oyster and clam beds cmfr have assessing their views on possible impact on a fishery in two ways one is a predicted direct impact and second is predicted indirect impact and has recommended that a social impact study must be conducted post construction of a mumbai coastal road projects out to identify the actual impact on a fishing based livelihood as per the study of cmfr and as per the action plan submitted to the high court 
based on the findings of study of CMFR, guidelines will be formulated to prepare a fisherman rehabilitation assessment policy for deciding the compensation to be paid to the affected fisherman. As we are knowing that this is in an intertidal zone, the alignment, coastal road alignment is in an intertidal zone, there is an impact on a fisherman, uh, some little impact on a fisherman who are fishing in an intertidal zone. So, BMC has decided to give a compensation to BMC has decided to give a compensation to the affected fisherman due to the MC, uh, Mumbai Coastal Road project. And for that, their guidelines will be formulated uh, to prepare a policy, fisherman rehabilitation assessment policy. To form that guideline, BMC has appointed Tata Institute of Social Science to prepare the draft compensation policy for the compensation of these surfing activities that are affected due to the project. This is also a one kind of a uniqueness in this project that BMC has not only doing the construction, but they have a very social, social this, uh, they have a very social view and that's why they have appointed TIS to prepare the draft compensation policy. If there is any, uh, anyone is affected due to the constru uh, construction of um, the coastal road, BMC has ready to give that compensation to them. Like in other projects, there are uh, regular basic environmental measures and compliances we have considering. Uh, we are going to cut 124 trees and 331 trees are transplanted in this total uh, MCRP project. And against 124 trees, we are going to plant you know, 390 new trees are planted. As per the conditions, we have deposited uh, 175 crores rupees to the Mangrove Foundation of Forest Department. So, Mangrove Foundation will establish artificial reef along the reclaimed side of a Mumbai Coast Road project through this deposit amount. And they have appointed NIO to carry out a pilot study. So, in this project, Coastal Road project, there is a first time we are going to study uh, or going to do the study of uh, establishment of an artificial reef along the reclaimed side. We are uh, regularly submitted six monthly environmental compliances report to MOFCC, CPCB, and MPCB as per the MCZM conditions. We are uh, using, uh, there are many things which uh, always enhance the environment. We are trying to enhance the environment is use of GGBS. We are replacing 50 to 60 percent of cement in concrete with a ggbs ggbs is a byproduct from the blast furnace used to make iron it replaces approximate equal quantity of cement in the concrete this has helped in reducing carbon footprint uh, regarding 1,79,005 mt of ggbs have been consumed till date which resulted in a, re a reduction of 1,69,816 metric ton of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere indirectly as one ton of cement release approximate 0.766 of co2 into the atmosphere we are going we are using water cycling water used in a slurry making in being recycled and reused through stp and filter press rmc wastewater is being given primary treatment and used for a water principling purpose 100% uh, lead la lights used as a site and offices are lead lights. Provision of biodialect throughout the site to minimize the domestic waste of the disposal. Use of transparent sheet in a cover shed which helps the uh, utilizing daylight to its maximum and reduction in electric energy consumption during daylight. In the first time, we are uh, provided a cover shed for a RMC plant, casting yard, and ground plant. 
for controlling the dust emissions and for controlling the noise pollution. We are using mist fogging machine for dust suppression at the site. Digital EHS reporting system save nearly 1,61,532 numbers of A4 size papers till day. Noise barrier, we are separated all nearby resident area with the provision of 12 meter high noise barrier, which is very effective in very effective in reduction of noise control. Noise enclosure during a segment casting. The noise emission during the segment casting is very high. For reduction of a noise pollution, we are using noise enclosure container during pouring and casting process of each segment. Marine biodiversity plan for protection of marine biodiversity has been made by NIO and monthly marine biodiversity monitoring is being done by the NIO Mumbai team. Ambient and noise monitoring is being done frequently by the authorized agency. Provision of sheet pile along the seashore to protect against soil erosion. Use of natural rock for seawall construction as it supports the growth of marine life. Noise pollution post commissioning noise pollution due to the sparing vehicle post commissioning the project may not affect as the road is about 100 meters inside transparently from the residential building nevertheless sound barrier will be provided wherever, wherever necessary as stipulated in crz condition so all this is uh, now we can i can show you the Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, please unmute your sound. Okay, hello? Hmm? Yes, ma'am. These are some uh, project progress photographs. This is a package for photographs. We can see here a uh, cut and cover a ramp going inside at Priyadarshani Park. Some of tunnel photographs. This is a tunnel. This is a tunnel boring machine. We can see a total uh, tunnel from 2.07 kilometer. Uh, fantastic view of tunnel. This is a 12.19 dia tunnel, TBM machines. This is during the row. Uh, rotation of tbm shells we have Hello, looked at screen, screen degree screen completion screen. of shifting a shell into the lhs this is some view hello ma'am you can see the view of a tunnel these are some photographs of package one ma'am slide show start kara Priyadarshini Park to Baroda Palace. 
as you can see there is a amarsens garden interchange and haji ali interchange in this package there is a one mainline navigation bridge as haji ali lotus jetty these are some tabs views at haji ali interchange and amarsens interchange these are some progress we can see the bridge area see the interchange uh, started interchange bridge beautifully this is superstructure segment casting this is a uh, amarsens jetty area this is main line bridge in land area ha madam bola f5 ka hum full screen kar raha hu okay f5 f11 ek second ek second ha punna slide show kar aale aale ek second ha Okay. Hmm. Okay. These are some photographs. You can see the tunnel area, ventilation system. This is tunnel. This is package four. You started from a Priyadarshini Park to the Baroda Palace. In this, there are two interchange. One is Amarsen Garden, and at a Hajjali interchange. and there is a main bridge crossing haji ali jetty or lotus jetty these are uh, fingers temporary structure for a construction of a bridge these are some pictures of superstructure work main line bridge this is arm 5 arm 3 This is a superstructure segment casting. You can see this is the DAB DAB for Amarsan. This is a crown wall casting of crown wall. Again, a beautiful view of a uh, arm. Um, bridge interchange bridge we can see the scaffolding how it is going to be used these are some photographs of package 2 it started from a uh, baroda palace to the end of varadi end of a ceiling project this is a uh, mb21 on lovegru nala main bridge about 150 meter this is all the sea wall we can see a beautiful sea wall placed at the right side also we can see a uh, and this this is a segment casting casting yard and we can see that enclosed rmc plant there this is a enclosed rmc plant first time in mumbai we are doing to eliminate the dust and noise and this is a casting yard this is another view of a casting yard you can see the reclamation and the um, box culvert and pup's construction this is a arms interchange you can see these are the piles mono piles in a sea and next is a proposed schematic landscaping as we as i had already told you ki we are using this 70 hectare a huge area for landscaping open space for a green area so we have some master plan in uh, concept we have and accordingly we are develop something so this is we are going to uh, 
रोड वी आर गोइंग टू लैंडस्केप आर रोड सम कोस्टल बायोडाइवर्सिटी पार्क विल बी देर इट्स अ कंसेप्चुअल प्लान सम पार्क विद आउटडोर इवेंट देर इज अ थिएटर and jogging track cycle track will be provided biodiversity park will be provided and these are some innovative lightings may be going to be provided this is a sea side promenade continuously we are going to get up 47.47 km and this is all about mumbai coastal road project thank you very much for listening me and uh, once again thanks to the uh, saraswati institute of uh, technology for giving me this opportunity thanks thank you ma'am thank you very much and uh, questions ma'am shall we go for question and answer uh, question and answer session uh, ma'am question Hello? is हेलो 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 मैम ऐकाला येत नाही आहे यस हेलो काहीच ऐकाला येत नाही हेलो 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 मॅम पीपीटी कंटिन्यू ठेवा नाही येते त्यांना आवाज हेलो हेलो हा मॅडम झालंय संपलंय पण मला ऐकायला येत नाही आहे मला हॅलो ओके मग सांगा ना त्याच्यामध्ये मला कसं कळणार ते व्हिडिओ पुन्हा स्लाइड मधला व्हिडिओ ऑन करू का व्हिडिओ ऑन पाहिजे ना तुम्हाला चालू केलेला हा शेअरिंग करू ना एक सेकंदा थांबा मी स्क्रीन शेअर करते पहिले इथे स्क्रीन शेअरचा ऑप्शन कुठे गेला हे ना प्रेझेंट नाव मध्ये पूर्ण विंडोज करू का फक्त ही शेअरिंग वाली हा इथे आपल्याला काय छोट्या ह्याच्यामध्ये घेऊन कळत नाही का म्हणजे आपण फक्त बघू चालेल ना हा 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 मला काहीच ऐकलं नाही हॅलो हॅलो मॅम हॅलो मॅम कॅन यू हिअर मी नाही मी काही बोलतच नाही आहे तुम्ही मला काही विचार नाही मला नाही येत आहे का ना मी अनम्यूटच आहे माझ्या मध्ये हॅलो मॅम हॅलो नाही येत आहे मला इथे मला दिसणार आहे का चॅट मध्ये
hello everyone participants there is some technical issue of voice so we stop here uh, today's session thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you ma'am for helping us become more aware of the problem and, and the way we can help to solve them we hope you will consent to speak to us again in future we are grateful for the time you give to us al also given us wonderful knowledge once again thank you ma'am we conclude out first session here thank you to all participants and viewers thank you Thank <laughs> you.